My name is Dr. Jaswinder Singh, and I'm a professor of medicine and professor of epidemiology at the University of Alabama in Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome to this presentation of the evaluation and management of a patient with suspected inflammatory spine disease. Chronic inflammatory diseases such as spondyloarthritis or SPA have a detrimental effect on patients because they are associated with pain, impaired function, diminished health-related quality of life, economic consequences arising from treatment-related costs, and a negative impact on employment and participation. The term SPA is used to describe a heterogeneous group of chronic inflammatory rheumatic diseases that can be divided into two subgroups, axial and peripheral, according to the predominant location of arthritis. Axial SPA is characterized by inflammatory back pain and patients have involvement of the sacroiliac joints, the spine, or in some cases, both. Patients with peripheral SPA, however, have symptoms predominantly localized to peripheral joints. Axial SPA can be classified as either ankylosing spondylitis or non-radiographic axial SPA. Ankylosing spondylitis, or AS, is considered the classic form of axial SPA and presents with characteristic radiographic damage. Alternatively, non-radiographic axial SPA presents without radiographic changes and is characterized by sacroiliac joint inflammation that is detectable by MRI or computed tomography or CAT scan. If left untreated, axial SPA can result in progressive loss of spinal mobility and function. Additionally, several comorbidities including osteoporosis, thoracic kyphosis, cardiovascular disease, uveitis, psoriasis, and inflammatory bowel disease can affect the ability of patients to function physically. The prevalence of axial spine in the United States is estimated to be 0.7%, with AS and non-radiographic axial spa both accounting for equal proportions of patients. Women with axial spa, however, may represent an undiagnosed, untreated, or understudied population. In a study of patients with axial spa, Female patients often did not present with classical features such as inflammatory back pain and disease onset, while the majority of both men and women experienced radiation of low back pain to buttocks or upper legs, women were significantly more likely to report pelvic, heel, or widespread pain. In addition, antisopathy was more prevalent in women. The significant burden of axial spa and its related comorbidities make early diagnosis and treatment important for patients that are afflicted with the disease. Early recognition and diagnosis of axial spa is challenging because inflammatory back pain, the hallmark of the disease, is easily confused with mechanical back pain. Therefore, it is important for primary care physicians to properly screen patients with back pain for axial spa so that they can be appropriately referred to a rheumatologist in order to prevent progressive loss of spinal mobility and improve the patient's quality of life through treatment. In this presentation, we will discuss the burden of axial spa and practical ways for primary care physicians to properly screen patients with back pain in order to differentiate patients with inflammatory back pain who may have axial spa from those with symptoms of mechanical back pain. A study comparing disease burden in patients with rheumatoid arthritis and axial spa demonstrated that the burden of axial spa with respect to reduced health-related quality of life, employment limitations, and economic costs is roughly comparable to that of rheumatoid arthritis. Impairment in physical function, particularly movements associated with bending at the, at the waist, causes many patients to experience difficulty in completing a full day of regular activity. Importantly, most impairment of physical function occurs within the first 10 years of disease onset and is associated with reduced vitality and fatigue. In addition to physical activities, patients with axial spa also report more anxiety than the general population, 
and may experience changes in mood, personality, self-perceptions, and a feeling of being stigmatized that can lead to withdrawal from social situations. Early and accurate diagnosis of exospy is critical because patients with early stage disease are estimated to have at least the same level of disease activity and pain as patients in the later stage of disease. Additionally, patients with undiagnosed exospa often experience continuous pain, stiffness, fatigue, diminished health-related quality of life, and progressive loss in mobility and spinal function. Early diagnosis can also reduce the need for unnecessary diagnostic procedures and inappropriate treatments. Historically, the time between onset of symptoms and physician diagnosis of access bar has been estimated as five to seven years. Delays in diagnosis can be attributed to the common and nonspecific presentation of chronic back pain, as well as the lack of elevated inflammatory markers in some patients. Additionally, no unique clinical feature or laboratory test can definitively diagnose access bar. Recently, MRI has enhanced early identification which allows for early initiation of treatment that can prevent loss of patient mobility. Chronic back pain is a common symptom of patients seen by primary care physician. In fact, results of the United States National Surveys indicate that roughly one quarter of adults report having back pain in the last three months. Therefore, differentiating inflammatory back pain from mechanical back pain is important proper referral of patients to rheumatologists, and ultimately accurately diagnosing axial spa. A short five-question survey can be used by primary care physicians to help differentiate inflammatory from mechanical back pain. The first question to ask a patient reporting back pain is, did your symptoms start at less than 40 years of age? Patients with inflammatory back pain will typically indicate that their symptoms started at less than 40 years of age while patients with mechanical back pain may experience new onset back pain at any age. The second question is, did your symptoms develop suddenly? Patients with inflammatory back pain tend to have symptoms that start with an insidious onset, whereas mechanical back pain can develop suddenly or become progressively over time. The third question is, do your symptoms improve with exercise? Patients with inflammatory back pain will report that the symptoms do improve with exercise, while patients with mechanical back pain will generally not experience any improvement. The fourth question is, do your symptoms improve with rest? Patients with inflammatory back pain will not reduce their symptoms by resting, but patients with mechanical back pain will notice improvement. Finally, the last question to help differentiate back pain is, do you experience pain at night that improves upon getting up? Patients with inflammatory back pain can alleviate their pain by getting up, moving at night, while results are variable for patients with mechanical back pain. A positive response to three of these five questions is indicative of inflammatory back pain that should be managed by a rheumatologist. Please see the accompanying manuscript for presentation of a case study for a patient referred to a rheumatologist under these circumstances. Axial spa is a chronic inflammatory rheumatic disease that consists of AS and non-radiographic axial spa. The similar burden of axial spa to rheumatoid arthritis, the negative effects of undiagnosed disease on patient health or quality of life, and high disease activity at onset make early diagnosis of axial spa critically important. Historically, there has been a delay in diagnosing patients with axial spa because of limited knowledge of the disease continuum and lack of discrimination between inflammatory and mechanical back pain in primary care. However, improved diagnostic approaches and better recognition of early signs and symptoms of axial spa have made early diagnosis possible. Further, new targeted biologic therapies provide effective therapeutic options for prevention of disease progression. Together, early diagnosis and targeted biologic therapies can help improve physical and psychological outcomes for patients with access spa. This concludes our presentation on evaluating and managing patients with suspected inflammatory spine disease. We hope you find this presentation informative. Thank you.
We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.